Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry for the few minute delay. I was having technical difficulties. Uh, before we get started, if you could just um, drop in the chat or question box, if you could hear us, that would be great. Can everybody hear me? And it doesn't look like I actually have access to the um, question box, but I'm, I know there are people on that can um, access it, so hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, anyway, we do, thank you, I got a Teams message from someone that they can hear me, so thank you, Marty. Um, we try to make these GROW webinars as interactive as GoToWebinar will allow. So please make sure that you are dropping questions in the question box. Um, someone will be monitoring them. We'll try to get to them at the end. And if we can't get to them, we can always reach back out later on and answer some questions individually or as a group. I want to welcome everyone to the GROW Mentorship Series. I'm your host, Joanne Theriel Alfasio, the SVP of Mortgage Lending and National Sales Director at Proper Rate and your GROW Mentorship Director. Our last Mentorship Series call on condos and deferred maintenance was our most attended call ever. And if you missed it, uh, we will provide you with a link. We'll drop it in the chat uh, for the video if you want to watch it later. All, all GROW calls are recorded. Materials are uploaded on your inter, um, your intranets and your resource center, so you can go back and watch anything over time, anytime you want. Um, I have an amazing panel of ladies with me today. I've worked with all of these women for a really long time. I love collaborating with them. Their sharing, caring hearts are amazing and shine through in everything that they do. And you are in luck today because they have so much to share with you uh, for the next hour. Sarah McMillan, our SVP of Marketing for Guaranteed Rate Companies. Jamie Kinman, SVP of Mortgage Lending out of Arizona, and Kristen Ambos, Producing Regional Manager out of Wisconsin. And I'm also super excited to announce that Kristen has taken over the role as GROW Chair. And before we kick off the call with a poll, I want uh, Kristen to say a few words. I'm going to put her on the spot. Thank you so much for the nice introduction, Joanne. I'm so excited to be a part of this and take on this role. So one of the um, reasons why GROW is so important to me is because as a woman in this industry, I have found different ways to kind of set myself apart and continue um, and work on that success. And so I was able to have some really great mentors as I came up um, within GROW and Guaranteed Rate. And this is my way to pay it forward was to take on this role and work with these amazing ladies that you see on this panel here. And so we just want to give back everything we can, pay it forward to those women in the industry, whether it's on the real estate side, the lending side, um, in, in whichever that, whatever way that looks. Um, but it's important that we keep each other, you know, we're good to each other. We give each other great information. We work together. We, you know, we celebrate together. We celebrate the wins and, and all of that. And so that's what this is really all encompassing. And that's why it was so important when, the role was offered to me that I that I take it and and um, I have some huge shoes to fill um, with Diane and I appreciate that and I uh, hope I keep it going with you guys. So thank you so much for having me. Yes, thanks, Kristen. Um, and before we get started in the presentation, we have a few polls that we're going to kick off. Um, I don't believe I will have access to see the poll when it comes through. Oh no, I did. Um, it says poll open. So everyone should be able to see what's up on the screen first. I believe it's just a simple question of, are you a, a salesperson from a guaranteed rate company or are you a referral partner? So Joanne, Take a sorry. Minute. Um, the first one is the, what platform do you utilize the most? Oh, okay. I can close Thank it. You. No, that's fine. We can do either one first. I just can't see it as the one ah, sharing my screen. Uh, LinkedIn, TikTok, and YouTube. Okay. Results are coming in. It looks like we'll wait till we hit 75%. All right. Cool. It looks like 47% are using Facebook at the top. 33% Instagram, 12% LinkedIn, 4% TikTok, and 3% YouTube. So Facebook and Instagram are wow. runners. 
Not surprising. I'm kind of surprised by the YouTube. I'm surprised by the YouTube number actually. I felt like it was up and coming a little bit more, but yeah, for sure. It definitely should be. So if you're not on the YouTube, right, that's an opportunity. If only three percent of people are actually using that, what an opportunity for you to be that next one to step up there. Facebook for sure, right? We do know that the majority of users are on Facebook and Instagram. So that to me is surprising, but I do agree, Joanne. I, I want more people to get on YouTube. It's a really, really cool tool and it does give you a lot of pull um, with things like SEO, search engine optimization, things like that. Yep. And I think we have one more poll, right, Natalie? Mm -hmm. Yes, so second poll is, are you a referral partner or a member of guaranteed rate companies? We've got about 50% of votes in. Looking like 75%. And as panelists, we don't get to vote, but obviously everybody knows where we're from, so. All right. So it's. Oh, 80%. wow. <laughs> 80% guaranteed rate companies and 21% referral partners. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, we're happy to share um, with everybody. And I do think that we're going to, um, you know, give a lot of good little nuggets of information that everyone can take away. So Sarah McMillan, let's, why don't you kick it off for us? Awesome. What are we going to talk about today? Let's do it. So you guys, when we're talking about setting you up for success, how do you level up? How do you get yourself to really feel like you're planning successfully for next year, right? It's right around the corner. We know time flies. So how do you set yourself up for success? I'm a marketer. I'm going to tell you guys, there's so many ways to do this, planning out your business, setting up time block, getting yourself set up for success. But really, truly for me, it's really looking at content and it's building out content calendars and building out a strategy around that, right? But there's lots of ways to do that. And we're going to walk through those today. But I want to share with you why it's important, right? There are so many reasons why it's important for us to use this as a main focus in our business planning. And really, truly, this is going to relate to everything, right? Whether you're using it on your website, whether you're doing blog posts, social media, right? If you're using YouTube and you're creating those informational videos, right? Lots and lots of opportunities for you to build up your business, right? For you to build that brand while focusing on key themes, right? It's easier when we think about things. It's easier if we can put things into buckets and see where they really need to be. So this basis is gonna do that for us. It's gonna give us something to build off of, right? It's gonna help us with consistency. People ask me all the time, Sarah, what is the big secret to success with marketing? Consistency, right? A lot of people will go in there and they will start posting on every platform and throwing everything out there and they'll do a really, really amazing job for three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. And then we get busy and life happens, right? And it falls off. You lose that consistency. Content pillars and building around these content pillars is going to help you to maintain that consistency. You're going to look at it and be like, oh, I haven't done anything with the community all year. I missed that full pillar, right? So these are opportunities for you to sit down and say, how do I set myself up on a consistent basis? How do I set myself up to have really good content around that, right? And we can use the buckets in that way to say, oh, I want to make sure I'm filling my promotional bucket and next my educational. But you want to make sure that this helps you to really keep yourself consistent. I will truly say that's the biggest thing that I see people maybe fail at is getting so excited and keep it going for three, four or five weeks and then it drops off, right? That consistency is important. If you want to know what that number is, nobody knows. But I will tell you, I did work in search engine optimization for 10 years. On average, we say three to five times per week on most platforms, okay? X or Twitter is going to be slightly different. Um, it's really looking at like 12 to 15 times a, a day. Um, and I know a lot of us just don't have the time for that. So really, truly, if we're sticking with things like Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, right? Those sort of things, three to five times per week, if you can set yourself up on a basis of that, I think it's really, truly going to keep you guys to, to really have that consistent factor. Next thing to talk about, right? Why is it important for us to play like this? Audience engagement. 
Okay, we want to engage with people. We want to keep them engaged with us. We want to make sure that they know the topics that we talk about, right? That they know who we are and can get those feelings from us. And each one of these is going to allow us to do that, right? Each one of these will engage them in a different way, right? In a different way for us to really, really get our audience to talk to us, to listen to us, to like the things that we're doing. Um, I did slightly mention search engine optimization, and I'm sure that this is something that all of you guys have heard about, but content pillars is going to help you with SEO, right? In the world of, um, of SEO and internet marketing, we kind of have like a big joke. We tell, we say, you're not on the first page of Google, you're not on Google, okay? You guys, that's not true, okay? Google's got many, many pages out there. You can be on page 39 and you're still there. The reality of this is that only 9% of all users go to that second page. So the joke is kind of real. If you're not on that first page, really, truly, only 9% of users are going to that next page, right? So if you guys are planning out your content properly and you're using it in ways like on your website, on your blog post, on your social media channels, and using those social media channels in the right way, it's going to help your SEO. Fun fact, Google own stock in a lot of your favorite social media companies okay a lot of people don't know that but if google owns stock in it they're probably going to give it a little bit more power right they're probably going to put more value into that I'm not saying that that they would say that but what i am saying is it's just a realistic fact they own stock in it right youtube google same connection right facebook owns a portion of google well, google owns a portion of facebook right so those are relations that you're gonna see a little bit more value in right so Think about that. SEO value is going to be in you building that content. Other things that we want to look at is brand, right? You're building your brand. You're building your presence. And all of these things have the ability for us to do that, right? You guys, long-term planning, this is going to set you up for success. Looking at these buckets, seeing where you can put yourself and which are the best ones for you to use. I want to mention, going through these things and talking about these things, I don't want you guys to feel like you have to be an expert at each one of these things, right? If you take one thing away from today's call, that's a step in the right direction. That's an opportunity for you to say, hey, I'm really going to focus on education. I think that means a lot to me. I can be really good at that. I know I can capture this market. Cool. Let's start there, right? Get yourself to feel comfortable in one of these areas, and then you can build on that, right? You can combine them, and you can start to build that presence. So that's the basis of why we're talking about this today. That's what it's going to do for you. It's going to build you that consistency. It's going to build that brand presence. You're going to get some SEO. You're going to get that engagement for your clients, right? And that's really, truly what we're looking for. So let's dig into these. Let's talk about how these are going to affect your business. These wonderful ladies that I obviously get the opportunity to work with have done these things, right? They've actually gone out. And they're using these things for their own success. And I follow them. And I'm going to tell you guys, it's awesome to really, truly be able to see some of the cool stuff they did. So let's talk about promotion. Probably the most common one that everyone knows about and probably sees most often. If you just look right here behind me, all of these things are promotion, right? You're going to bring your cup out. You're going to go to the soccer game and it says, I work for guaranteed rate. It screams it, right? Look at all the things that you guys have from a promotional standpoint. Why is that important? Because it builds your brand. It promotes your products. It promotes your services, right? It serves as a direct marketing tool. Anytime that you can bring these things with you and get them in front of things, it's really, truly going to start driving that business, that sales, that brand awareness. Also maintains customer loyalty, right? When people see your name over and over again and see your products or your jackets, right? Those are reminders that I want to work with Joanne, that I want to work with Kristen, that I want to work with Jamie, right? Those are those reminders that keep us in front of them. Now, there's lots of ways to do this, right? You're showcasing what you have to offer. You can also showcase your partners, right? We know we've got a lot of referral partners on here. We want to work together. We want to show ourselves, but we also want to show what you have, what our partners can do for you, and how we really build that relationship. It really comes down to branding yourself. Another time, people say, another thing that people ask me a lot is, you know, with that secret to success, what is it? It's you. I promise you, you're the secret to success, right? I can give you the tips, I can tell you what to do, but we all do business with people we like, right? We do business with people that give us information, that are the experts. 
So you're that secret sauce and promoting yourself really brands yourself and it builds that trust. It builds that authority. It builds that really, really great relationship directly with your clients. So let's see some of the things that our wonderful ladies are doing right now. Joanne is out there and she's doing it a lot. She's got some really, really awesome promotions. So Joanne, if you can tell us a little bit about how you do this and how your expertise really works in the field. Yeah, so first of all, I was going to show everyone our storage room, but then I, I can see it from here and it's just, it's really overwhelming how much promo we have in there. And I'm like, no one needs to see, like I have a, I have a, a promo problem. I love to put my logo on everything. Anything you can put your logo on is great. Your company logo, if you have like, a, as a real estate agent, you might have your own separate logo that you can add. And a lot of times we co-brand with agents. So I have a few things up here that have really worked well for us. Um, first of all, yes, I do have a tent. Um, if you live in an area where your weather is inclement, like the Chicagoland area, like you just never know what you're going to get, having a tent is a very good investment. Um, but we have a lot of different things that we've done. And so I'm going to see, I don't know if you can see my mouth moving, but here in the bottom left corner, we have like when we do dog park events, like we've done with agents before. So you just, you know, this is a poop bag. Yes, we've co-branded a poop bag before, but everybody uses them if they have dogs. So it's like things that are like really easy everyday items. They're really great. Um, and yes, totally have proper rate Santa hats because why not? Um, a lot of different things like that. But one thing that I think we really love to do is like raffle baskets. They're great for open houses. They're great for um, if your agent is doing an event like a happy hour and just wants to do a raffle. They're great if you're just doing like a pop-up ice cream thing and you want to capture information for the community. Um, the key is to try to get out, you know, get more consumer information so you add to your database. So we do a lot of co-branding and I actually think some of the stuff did get cut off in here, but this is like a popcorn bowl that's branded. We have a mug that's branded and then you also will add things that people like because they don't just want things with your logo on them like if your entire kitchen can be my logo I'm good with that but um, you know we have little fun things that we've done this co-branded basket here in the bottom right um, with an agent where we have a cute little mug and our little like wine tote but then they add their own flavor too so your actual items don't necessarily have to be co-branded but if you happen to have this like a cute little cutting board and then it's kind of harder to see but this is a pie server it's Thanksgiving time pie servers are really great inexpensive way to co-brand and it stays in someone's drawer all year round and they pull it out at the, the best time of the year which is the time that they're thankful and then they see your name um so i'm a big fan of co-branding kitchen items um household items of course um items you know we have little things like onesies for babies when you have somebody a client who has a um a child it's always nice to send them something or a, a branded blanket that's soft and fuzzy Another thing, um, I don't love co-branding food. It's not my favorite because somebody eats it and then it's gone. However, certain things I think are very much appreciated. And so one thing that we do every single year, back to school time, we co-brand um, cookies with our agents. Put a little sticker on. You can put a sticker on pretty much anything that you want. Cookies are very easy to put stickers on. And then just go ahead and co-brand the label. And we usually do a little sign, you know, courtesy of um, the Theory Alfazio team, proper rate, and, you know, agent name. Um, but really getting out in your community, which we're going to lead into in a, a little bit. But, yeah, I'm a fan of putting my logo on everything. Anyway. I love it. But you guys, right? Like, look at all the opportunities for you to put your name out there. We all know the age old saying, right? Eight to 10 times somebody sees your face or name and they remember you. It's real. It really, truly does leave that impression, right? So getting your name out there, putting cups out there. I will tell you guys, I keep the stuff that people give me, right? So anytime I see something that's like, oh, wow, this is a really great cup. Oh, Chris again? so cool i'm always going to remember kristen right like it gives you those opportunities to really have that reminder and it does make an impression here's the thing i wanted to remember you when you're buying right that's a specific moment this is a specific opportunity you have to catch them at that exact moment right so the more time that you promote yourself the more opportunity that your name or your partner's name is shared with you right these are all ways that somebody's going to say Now's my time. And I'm gonna call Joanne, right? If that's the reminder you want, that's what promotion does for us, right? It really truly is an investment in yourself 
but it really brands that that name and really reminds people you're the person to go to. I'm telling you guys, I'm in Chicago land. Joanne is in Chicago land as well. And her name is everywhere, right? Like I know she's really captured her market, right? She's really owned that market. And I see her name everywhere, right? I actually am from up north where Joanne is operating. And so I go visit my friends and I'm like, there she is again, right? But that branding and that promotion is really truly what makes people go to her. It builds trust in ways that we don't realize, right? You're not an expert, you're not providing that you are experts, right? But in this situation, it's just your name, right? They don't know you, they don't see who you are, they can't, they're not talking to you, but your name builds trust. The more you see it, the more often someone is going to trust you, right? And Joanne's captured that, and I love this. Uh, really, truly lots of opportunities for you to get in front of people. And I'm gonna tell you guys, I have one of those dog food bag folders, and it is my favorite promotional item that I own because it's legit, super cool. And you know what? Every time I see it, see the name, which is really great. All right, let's talk about education. So education is so important, right? Second, second pillar we have here, focusing on adding value, right? you're adding value to your audience by providing them with educational information, right? It positions you as the authority in your industry, right? It makes you the expert. It makes you the most knowledgeable person. This is going to be creating content like how-to, tutorials, right? Blog posts, webinars, seminars of some sort, right? Any sort of educational content is gonna build more trust right? It's going to establish your brand as the source of truth, the source of knowledge, right? You are that trusted brand. Getting this kind of information out there really truly is going to help your clients to understand, right? In our industry, this is a difficult industry to understand as a consumer, right? We look at all the terms that are out there. You know, there's so many things out there that prior to me getting into mortgage was like, what does that mean? Why not? What does that mean, right? Explain that to me, right? Lock it, listen, what? What does that mean, right? So we have that opportunity in this industry to really educate and share with people, share with our borrowers, what does this mean? And what does it mean for you, right? Breaking down industry terms, defining the buying process. What's gonna happen when I start this? How am I gonna feel? What do I need? How do I prepare for these things, right? And we certainly want to keep it simple when we're doing that. That age old saying as well, right? It's important for us to not overcomplicate. Keep it as simple as possible. Know your audience, right? They don't have the knowledge that you have. I promise you that. I do work with loan officers every day and my loan officers are much smarter in the mortgage industry than me. I don't know what all that stuff means. So know that you, you know it, right? Dumb it down a little bit. Take that down a little bit to make it simple for people to understand. A lot of times in the marketing world, we always try to say like, go to a seventh grade level that normally from a marketing standpoint, um, think that your client doesn't know anything about the buying process, right? Make it simple, but make it informative, right? Give them that information they need. My friend Kristen does this really well. Um, she's got lots and lots of educational tips that she puts out there. I love listening to her because it educates me for sure. Um, so Chris, if you can tell us a little bit about how you're doing this, what you're doing, we'd love that. Yeah, thank you so much. So um, one of my big things, a lot of people don't know about me is that um, when I started and left high school, and went into college, I went into the educational field. And what I learned about myself is I loved to teach, but me and 20 little bitties was, I, I didn't, I. I love and respect teachers for everything they have, but my patients didn't go that route, right? But it didn't stop my love for wanting to educate. So what I found is a way to intertwine the two, my business right now in mortgage, as well as the education factor. And I started by doing videos. Um, I've been doing videos for a couple of years now, but I also try to educate within my static posts as well. But YouTube has been really good to me as far as getting that word out, social media, getting that word out. and um, you know, one of the things that I try to do is I try to, like Sarah said, I try to break down my videos on something that can be relatively complicated in a in a discussion or a topic. And I try to break it down like I'm talking to my 18 year old about it. Right. Who doesn't understand what a mortgage is. She just wakes up, <laughs> gets ready and goes to school and knows she's got a house to go home to. 
like so in my world it was like okay if i can make the general public understand the basics then that's really a big help and and so that's exactly what i did here as far as when it comes to the branding Sorry. and a lot of what you see in my in my youtube pages you see me and, and a lot of my my marketing in general is you see me sitting on a couch you see me sitting in a kitchen you see me sitting other places because at the end of the day as much as i'm sitting in an office i'm also doing all this work on my couch at my kitchen table and those types of things but it's also real to the consumer it puts the consumer where they are in their living room researching in their kitchen researching in front of their you know at the end of the day we're like you we're like the consumers and for me it was always important to break it down for people so that they felt comfortable about it instead of going into what i call like a stuffy bank situation where people are talking over your heads, you don't understand, and you just hope it's the right thing for you. In my world, this is one of the largest transactions you're ever gonna make, right? There are these purchases, even if you buy one house, two house, 10 houses, it doesn't matter, it's a lot of money, and it's your mortgage. And I can be your guide, I can be your expert of what you need to do, but at the end of the day, my job is to give you all the information possible for you to make the best decision for yourself as a consumer. And so that's really what it comes down to. The other thing that I found through all of this is the amount of real estate agents who understood a mortgage, but don't necessarily understand our mortgage process and how much it changes quarter to quarter, year over year, market over market. So what I could be educating you on last year is absolutely different than this year. So YouTube and my social media platforms are a way to continue to update people so that when they're writing, whether they're a real estate agent, whether they're a consumer, both, they, you know, other loan officers, I've actually had quite a few loan officers reach out to me and say, hey, I was a new loan officer in the field and your videos really got me into understanding my job and teaching me about my job and, and things like that because there is no perfect platform for somebody that goes into mortgage and gets trained and just all of a sudden does like a five week training and knows everything there is to know about mortgage. I bet you any one of these ladies will tell you that we're all tenured and have been in the business for 20 years and we don't know. <laughs> There's new things that happen in the mortgage world every time it's constantly evolving. So these platforms for me were really the way to get out there and help a large audience at one time. And, and try to become their expert of choice. Try to have them call me to say, hey, I'm running through this situation, or I get a lot of phone calls that say, Kristen, you're not my lender on this, but can I just ask? And because I'm an outside lender, I'm also, I have no skin in the game when it comes to those questions of my, you know, the people that I work with as referral partners and things like that. I just want them to get their deal done for them and their consumer, their buyer. And so it only helps to educate them in that. And then in turn, what's happened over the years is that those people now have seen what I'm educating on come to fruition. So I've also been able to justify what I'm saying as being the local expert and things like that, because what I'm saying is truthful. I'm not trying to sell around anybody. I'm not trying to spin circles around, you know, oh, it's free lender costs, but I'm gonna charge you points, but I'm gonna give you this and people's heads spin because they have no idea what you just told them. So breaking it down, you know, like Sarah said, at a very low level, um, I jokingly, but this is kind of funny and I'm sure a lot of you will feel the same way. About five years ago, my husband was in a bad accident and had to have surgery. And luckily for us, we are not people who, I had never paid a deductible on my insurance premium. Ever. I had no idea how to. So I called the the <laughs> I called the medical department and I said, okay, do I pay you? And she started going into this all this jargon, medical jargon. And I said, okay, listen, I need you to dumb it down for me as low as you possibly can go. And I'm not offended by that. I'm just saying I'm not an expert in medical and I have no idea what you're saying right now. So who do I pay? And she actually was like, thank you so much here's what you do and she just gave it to me like that and i took that instance and thought this is what it's like in mortgage people are confused every day because they're hearing something different and we're using these big words and acronyms and things like that 
we've got to just for lack of a better term just bring it down bring it down to a level and so sarah couldn't be more spot on from that when i went through that medical thing i immediately thought how do i change my mortgage business and how do i fix my education with what i want people to know and that's where it all kind of came from so it's it's really full circle awesome i love that what and that's the thing right is really getting it down to a level that people can understand, right? We think, I think sometimes we take it for granted. We think, oh, that's super simple. And we, we all know what that is, but really, truly think of, think about your client, think about your customers, educating adds so much value. And I, and I really, truly think adding that to, uh, to your marketing plan is so important, right? Let's talk about community, guys. I love anything bringing the community together. I truly believe that this helps you to create a sense of belonging right you're part of the community you've engaged yourself you're interacting directly with them right this helps building your community around your brand right you guys somehow become one everyone in the community knows you it's your market i said it earlier right you want to own your market building in that community really gives you that push on that examples of things like this right are going to be forums social media groups customer reviews that you're getting but also getting yourself out there in ways that jamie has done she really crushed this i love how she's gotten herself out there in the community and really brought things together so jamie why don't you share with us what you're doing um, out there to bring people together hi everybody um one of the things i've been with guarantee rate for 16 years and one of the things that's resonated with me since my decision to come on board that many years ago was I remember our CEO saying, you know, that they they built this business and grew based on events. And so that's always kind of resonated with me. And I'm a very social person and I grew up in Phoenix Metro. So I feel like I know a lot of a lot of people through business and just growing up here. So um what's really cool, this slide that's up, um, this is the realtor that I work with. Um, who lives in my community. And um, we started in the last couple of years, we wanted to be the go-to kind of thought when, hmm, I wonder what's going on in our community. So we we just decided to start doing things like we start, this is, we're going into our fourth year of doing blood drives. So, you know, we talk to the, you need, you need a big space. So we utilize uh, Red Cross, but we we do it in a church in our neighborhood because it allows us to have them bring their equipment in um and it's gotten it's built momentum to where every um you know 60 to 70 days or so you have to be 56 days past your last donation to do blood drives and so now it's kind of everyone kind of knows what to expect we put it out on social media and they get calls from red cross now but we have built that following that way but we also have gotten involved in the school. So like you'll see a snow cone event, it's kind of cut off on the right, but we do a back to school, you know, we we pay for the snow cone cup, uh, truck, excuse me, to come to either, you know, a side street in the neighborhood or we have a country club kind of in the center of our community. And so we've connected with them and we utilize our parking lot. So um, we do back to school, it's not on this particular one, but. We do back to not back to school. We do a spring um, annual movie in the park. So like we're already planning for that. So we kind of want to be the go to event planning, you know, people. And you'll see on here, it's like, you know, this is a magnet, actually. And then there's, you know, I definitely encourage you is get really good at QR codes, you know, build a landing site. So now we, we ask people to RSVP to all of our events. Plus, we need to know based on supplies for different things um but also it builds our email list and ability to you know alert people of what's going on in the community or like what events and things like that so it, it, you know i think it's a great way to go you know if you're a realtor talk to your lender if you're a lender talk to your realtor and maybe it's in your community their community or a community that you want to build business in you know um, i happen to do this with we both live in the, in the community um, but you'll see on there, I mean, we do, we, we even put other events on this particular magnet of other things that just go on in our community. Like, you know, there's a, everyone goes bananas with Christmas lights in my neighborhood. So there's, you know, we just happen to put on there, 
you know, that there's judging coming up or we do a donuts with Santa. So we get donuts and we hire a Santa and you can come take pictures and you can use it for your Christmas card. So that, those are just some of the things I do. I, I think it's a great example of working with your referral partner and building out events. So one, you don't have to do it alone because it can be, it can feel overwhelming, but, it, but it's also a great way to build business together and be that go-to in your community. Yeah, so totally. I love this. I mean, Jamie has really emerged herself in the community, right? And that's the cool thing is they look, people look forward to this. Like when's the next event? What's Jamie going to do next? Right. Um, these are all ways that you're connecting, you're making those connections with the community and you're part of that, right? It's not just like you're sending over donuts to the firehouse, which is great. Don't get me wrong. Do that. You know, but it's not just that it, it's showing up for your community. It's being there to be that person that isn't just selling them something or trying to get them something, right? And of course, we're all trying to help people. We know that, right? But the reality is, is this also is you getting yourself in the mix. You're out there and you're trying to talk to people and get to know people and really build up your community. There's value in that, right? There's value in what other people see from that. You want to be part of something and they want to be part of a community as well. And so bringing those people together, there's so much value in that. And I love really getting yourself involved in that. Jamie, you've done a really, really awesome job with that. Well, thank you. What yeah, I mean, I think, I think, oh, yeah. sorry. I was going to say one thing too, to think about, like, if you don't know what events to plan or sometimes it's reaching within to say like, what's important to me or what's a, what's a reason I want to give back. That's how the blood drive started. You know, I had to receive blood after I had my first child. So it was like, well, I want to pay it forward. So that's sometimes if you don't know what to do or where to start, maybe look at your own little passion projects of something that, you know, you want to give back, but also I feel like giving others a reason to give back and just setting it up for them. Yeah. You know, they appreciate it. So yeah, that's my little tidbit on that. No, I love that. You're totally right. They appreciate not having to, you know, they get to show up and be part of it. But the planning, you know, we all know planning takes a lot, right? So really, truly getting yourself out there and planning for other people is awesome. Um, but there's some really simple things you can do in the community. And I think Jamie's given us a, a lot of really good ideas to get everyone started. So super appreciative of that. Uh, the next one we have is entertainment. Now, you guys, this is an interesting one, okay? Because I want you to think, we all think entertainment is like going out, partying, having a great time, you know, having a little get together, bringing people over for tacos and tequila. And it's not, it's not really that, right? This is about engaging with your audience on an emotional level, right? It's about creating enjoyable, relatable, sometimes entertaining content. But also this can be storytelling, right? If you're if you're not a funny person, if that's just not your jam, that's okay, right? We're all different, right? But you can make yourself relatable. And entertainment, the pillar itself, is really centralized around that, right? Around telling stories, making yourself more relatable. I always make the joke when I do um, any sort of call, if it's just one-on-one -on -one or I'm on with you know a hundred people or whatever it is. I can promise you guys, if you see me walking down the street, this is me right? This is my personality. Entertainment allows us to actually show people who we are, right? If you see me on the side, I'm probably talking with my hands and, you know, this is actually who I am, but that allows us to be relatable, right? It allows us to be enjoyable and have laughs with people, but it also allows them to feel what we're going through, right? Um, I know some of us have probably been on our social media and you see someone has had something something, you know, not great happened to them in their life, maybe a loss, or maybe they've had an accident, and you want to, you want to reach out, you want to care for them, you want to show them that you want to support them, right, and a lot of times entertainment's going to fall into that, right, it's going to fall into you being more on a personal level, being a brand that somebody can remember, being a person that somebody can remember, and having something relatable to them, um, so really, truly, when we're talking about this one, I want you guys to have fun, but I want you to tell your story. I follow all of these ladies on their pages, and I know Kristen has had a, a story that I think has resonated with a lot of people. I know it resonated with me, but it also allowed me to, to know her more, right? So Kristen, can you tell us a little bit about your experience and how you kind of shared that with your with your friends and family? Yeah, so um, it, about three years ago, I was in, my husband and I were in a, Gosh, you guys are going to think that we're just always in accidents. It's not the case. Um, <laughs> but 
we were in a pretty bad motor vehicle accident um, that left me in the ICU for about a week. Um, and like Jamie, I was on the verge of a blood transfusion. However, it was during COVID. So they were trying to save all the blood they could. I've done blood drives because of that same reason. So again, just another factor in. Um, but what it really did was it gave me and, and the accident and how I've shared that with people, it, it gave me a second thought on life. It really, truly had. Um, I was minute by minute uh, nurse in my room 24 seven, almost didn't make it. And um, it, I didn't know that at the time, thank God. Um, but what I did was I look back on it now and going, how can I be better? How can I make this better? How can I share my experience? And again, a lot of it is just letting the public know that you're human too, that you are relatable, you've been there, you've done that. And so many times, um, you know, in, in entertainment and why this brings up is because when I'm talking to clients and they're telling me their stories, because I always say bad things can happen to really good people, right? Um, and it, it's not necessarily entertaining, but what it brings down to, if you look into the, in the middle box there, it's storytelling, it's humor, it's creating that relatability. It's, it's making you and your client come together on a space that they trust you and you trust them instead of just being a transaction walking into a bank and you know sitting down signing some paperwork not knowing what you're getting into and walking away that's not that's not fun and it you know as as much as something that was so tragic in my life um has happened i love sharing it because it has truly changed my business for, we can get through this. We can get through anything. You know, if you had a bankruptcy, it's okay. We can get through that. We can get you on the right path. Medical bankruptcy. People are so, that happens so much because they have a tragic event in their life. But somebody doesn't truly understand what they're going through. And that's something that when I'm talking to them, I feel like I can, I can empathize with them and I can share that experience with them. And now it's real. It's real person talking to real person. And so many times I think we, we don't allow that as part of our business because we think that we have to be that banker, we have to be that professional, we have to, but that doesn't mean you can't be a real person and take a bad experience and make light of it and enjoy what life has to give. And that's where when Sarah and I were talking about this and, and the rest of the ladies, this is a real experience that I've, I've used in my business. I only wake up every day and go, how are we going to conquer today? Because we have a second chance at life and we have a second chance of making the world better, but also really being relatable to the clients and what they're going through. Because some people may think that every loan we do is with somebody with a 780 score and 20% down, but that could be farther from the truth. I bet you that's 1% of my business. I don't know if you guys agree. The majority of it is people going, I had this happen in my life but I still want to be a homeowner or I still need to do ABC and X, Y, Z. And we're real too. We want to bring that to you. We want to have that relationship with you. We want you to come back to us and have that relationship. This is not, we're not a company of transaction. We're a company of relationships, whether it be with our referral partners, with our clients, and even within our team, all four of us are from different areas, yet we come together and make the most of the time we have together to bring not only this webinar to you, but as actual grow members of how can we make our company better? How can we make those around us better? And it's all part of that. It's all putting that together, no matter where we are in the country, we can make that happen for everyone. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. And I think we don't, we all have moments where we've gone through things, where we've had tough stories. We've also had moments where exciting things have happened to us, right? I don't, I don't have babies, but I know all my friends that have babies. What exciting moments for them, right? And these are entertainment opportunities. These are opportunities for us to say, I've been there. I've been where you've been. I feel your pain, right? I felt that way too. So I don't want you to think about pain always as fun and always bubbly and silly. I want you to think of it as a story as being relatable, right? And I love when you can use your own experiences to do that, right? I tell my own stories of my life and the things I've been through 
because I want people to know who I am. It allows us to be more relatable. I love that. And I love that opportunity to bring people together. Well, the last one we have to talk about is engagement. What does that mean? This is actually talking, engaging, liking, right? Um, examples are going to be like using things like surveys or polls, right? Contests, interactive social media posts, right? Things that are going to get people to engage with you. Anytime you get a like, a share, a repost, right? All of those things help you. They help to build your brand and your business, but you're also talking to people, right? I also want to share with you guys that a lot of people don't know this. Engagement is also review, right? Anybody that writes a review on you, you want to engage with that. Hey, Sarah, it was awesome working with you. It was great working with you too, right? You want to have that engagement. Every engagement that you have builds up your business. Every engagement that you have builds your presence on SEO or search engine optimization, right? It builds your presence in the social media algorithm. Fun fact, you didn't know there's a SEO algorithm that happens on the big internet. Then there's a social media algorithm that happens <laughs> on top of that, right? So you've got all these really weird filters going in saying, how are you doing that, right? Engagement is part of that. It helps to push you up. So we want to make sure we're engaged. We want to make sure that we're doing it. We're being consistent, right? And we made, we made a little joke when we were planning this out for, for everyone. We said, you know, Jamie said, just do it and do it scared. It's okay to be scared, you guys. It's totally all right, right? I can promise you the first time I made a video, I wasn't as comfortable as I am today, right? Because we're afraid. We don't know what we're going to look like or sound like or feel like, right? but just do it. Start filming a couple of videos. Have your camera with you when you're walking around and film five or six videos and see what it looks like and then delete them all, right? And say, okay, next time I'm gonna be better, right? These are all ways for you to get comfortable and get comfortable putting yourself out there, right? Engagement, it's a two-way conversation. You're starting up talks with them, right? And so make sure that you're getting yourself out there. Um, we had talked about things about how do you get yourself to be a little bit more successful with engagement? How do we get ourselves out there? You guys, setting time blocks is a great way to do this. Really, truly setting yourself up and say, all right, for five minutes every day at three o'clock, I'm going to go out and I'm going to engage with people, right? Five minutes of your time, right? Five minutes of my day, I'm going to go out on LinkedIn and I'm just going to add connections. Here's another fun fact. 10,000 plus. If you have 10,000 plus connections on LinkedIn, you get more value from Google. I know. Get yourself up there. But engaging is so important. Joanne does a really great job engaging and increasing her reach and increasing her audience volume, right? Um, so, Joanne, you can tell us some of the things you're doing to kind of keep that engagement up and really keep that involvement with your clients. Yeah. So, just super, super quick. Um, it's kind of really also talking about what Kristen and Jamie have also talked about when we're talking about, you know, where your entertainment is or your storytelling. And for a long time, I didn't share anything personal on my business page. Like I have a, I partner with my husband, so we have a separate page. And I was like, I'm not going to put my baby on there. But you know what? My baby is really cute, like really cute. And he does fun things. Now he's almost two. And so why not? Like he fell asleep in the shopping cart at Costco because apparently it's not fun to go there. I don't know. I like it. And I, um, I find it fascinating how some, some things you post, you get way more engagement on Facebook and sometimes it's more on Instagram. And so for this one, like it, it this was like within a few hours, like you can see on the left hand side, like the engagement on Facebook was so high. And so that's why you have to post it everywhere so when that poll we did in the very beginning when it's like which one do you use the most and i think probably everyone just chose what they use the most but like you kind of have to be on all and what's great is you can post the same thing to all platforms but you have different reach um also another way that we've increased our engagement is by doing a, like a partnership series video so our we have an insurance company within guaranteed rate and we've you know been doing videos with our reps who's amazing. We have a title company we have a partnership with, credit repair guy, like so many different people that can add value to your base. And so what's great about that is like we tag them, they share it. Now your videos are getting more reach. So there's just different ways to engage. Um, like we literally could probably go on all day and talk about different the different pillars. We only have a couple of minutes left, so I'm going to let Sarah take yeah. it home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So here's the thing, guys. All of those things are important. And it's important for you guys to know that you don't, don't limit your content to one pillar, but get yourself comfortable with one pillar, right? If you're like, hey, you know what? I think community is my jam. I think I can start out there. I can get comfortable getting myself involved, get comfortable reaching out and making partners and getting yourself out there. Start with that, right? So just so you know, don't limit yourself. Whatever you feel comfortable with is a place to start. But combining these pillars is going to be impactful for your business, right? It's going to show that you've got lots of different ways to engage and interact with your clients, right? Um, think about a piece of content, right? A lot of times that piece of content is going to be both, you know, let's say educational and entertaining, right? There's opportunities to combine these things together. What I truly want you to think about is getting yourself engaged, right? Getting yourself out there. How to feel more comfortable doing this. A lot of times when I talk to people, they say like, so where to start, right? And, and that's the thing. Sometimes there's so much out there that we don't know where to start. I hope that this is a starting point for you guys to say, I'm going to choose one of these pillars and I'm going to start building on it. Or I'm going to choose two of these pillars and I'm going to start building on it. Because every time you add a combination on here, it's going to add depth, right? It's going to add that richness to your content strategy. So thinking about combining these is really, truly going to help you guys. But start out with one. Get yourself comfortable with that. Uh, on the next one, I do talk about like creating that strategy, right? How are you going to create this content strategy? What I suggest to everyone is that you balance them out, right? You take a couple different things, you get yourself acclimated to it, you feel a little bit more comfortable with it. But the bottom line here, and what I want everyone to remember, is that your audience is the key, right? Tailor your talking points to your audience, right? What's a hot topic right now, right? For us in our industry, I see a lot of my loan officers talking about what's going on in the market, right? What's happening today? Um, because there's ever changing, something new is coming out, giving people news tips, right? Um, you know, like a Wednesday tip of the day, right? Or Friday, we're going to talk about a fun fact Friday. Those things really get your audience to understand more, right? To get them in involved on what their levels of their needs are here interest their behavior i always encourage people you want people to follow you follow them too right follow them and see what they like what's a topic that they talk about all the time i'm telling you guys i see people all the time and every time i see them i'm like hey how's it going with your kid i see that baseball game yesterday that was awesome they're like how do you know all these things about me because i spend the time getting to know my clients. I spend the time getting to know what do they want to talk about? What can I provide them? This is going to help you guys to really have a well-balanced content strategy, right? Make sure that you're focusing on all the things that are out there. Uh, uh, get yourself set up to say lots of opportunities to create content. Of course, we're usually talking about social media. Most of us will use this on social media, but I do want everyone to keep in mind this applies to everything, right? This applies to your strategy when you're sending out email campaigns. This applies to your strategy if you're doing a digital marketing campaign. Think about the different buckets we have and how you can target yourself to that. This is a lot of information we've given you guys today. I do want to finish up with a couple fun facts around social because I just think there's so many crazy things out there in the social world that people don't think about, right? Um, I mean, Joanne just mentioned to us, right, a um, lot higher reach on her child on Facebook. Um, that is because the average user on Instagram is under the age of 35. So I'm sure a lot of those people haven't had the ability to see cute kids yet, and they don't know how awesome Joanne's kid is, right? But you think about your audiences, right? Under 35, over 35, people that use videos more, people that are looking for educational content. So I've given us some things here that I think are really cool. 44% of TikTok users are under the age of 25, right? Think about that. Today they're under the age of 25. It's going to happen in five, 10 years, right? Those are your buying market. Start getting to them now, right? We know that they're going to be the first time home buyers at some point. We know in five years they're going to be that set the precedent now, right? A lot of you guys told us that you're not on TikTok, right? That was a very small usage. Now's your chance. If not a lot of people are on there, get your name out there. Get yourself set up for success, right? Look at those markets. 
Another one that we don't talk about a lot, but I will mention it because we are talking about TikTok, YouTube Shorts. A lot of you guys said you're not using YouTube. Um, YouTube is such a powerful, powerful tool, but YouTube has a version of their um, of their system called YouTube Shorts. It's TikTok videos, it's Instagram Reels, right? This is an opportunity for you to get ahead of everyone else, right? Everyone doesn't have a YouTube Short account set up. They're going to be using them. People use that, right? The average user spends 2.5 hours a day on social media. If you're not on there, if you're not posting those things, you're missing out on all that business, right? More than 75% of the entire global population is using social media. You guys, everything is available for you right here. Everyone is using it. Nine out of 10 internet users use social media, right? So it's 90% of the entire world that's out there using the internet is looking on social media. Right? These are ways for you to get in front of them, right? I really want you guys to know, focus on something, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, but focus on one thing and build off of that, right? Say, I'm gonna start out with TikTok. I'm gonna start out with Facebook. I'm gonna start out with Instagram. I do wanna share with you guys one big and major difference before we leave you today. Um, Instagram, Facebook, right? Consumer focus, mostly consumer focus. LinkedIn? business referral partners partnerships you're going to be having right so if you if you don't have one of those two sides that i just talked about pick up one of those i would always recommend that right you always got to think client side business referral partner side of things um linkedin is a really great tool for that but if you're looking to target those clients of course suggest that you do tiktok instagram linkedin I'm sorry tiktok instagram facebook and youtube right use youtube create videos Get your information out there. Consistency is key, especially as part of your business. You guys, we covered so much information today, and I know we didn't dig too much into business planning, but we got two minutes left. If you guys want to add any of the things that you guys are doing, uh, really with the tools that we shared to help for success. I was going to ask Jamie and Kristen a question that I think would be really helpful for everyone listening, because we talked a lot about social media, obviously, today, and how to incorporate it into your business. But when you know we're at that time of year where we need to start business planning, what is your method of business planning? Is it a calendar exercise? Is it a written out plan? What do you look at? That's a, I do a little bit of all of those. Uh, sorry, Kristen. Um, no, okay. I, I definitely, um, I, I really try to, to live by consistency as your character like that. So I've been really trying to, to be consistent on posting stuff, for example. And so what I do is I try to calendar events because I'm a big event person, as you know, with, for myself, for my partners. Um, so I look at the whole year as a whole, a lot of times and start just back filling my calendar with things I want to do, um, and leaving space for things that'll pop up spontaneously. Um, I also like I do. Um, I still do like a vision board. Um, I know, kicking it old school, right? Um, and and then I write down some goals and I put them up like on my wall right here. Um, I find that if I do like the multi-page type up, I write it and then it literally sits in like a folder on my desk. So that's just how I do it. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome. I'm like Jamie, I do a lot of events too, Joanne as well. So events are always the first thing, like I'm already planning events for next year, all year, like Jamie um, and Joanne probably are just to keep myself on pace. Um, I do plan out social media, what we're posting on what days to also hold myself accountable to make sure I'm posting on there. Um, and that, because that's what the consistency, Sarah is so true or so, so correct when she says consistency. And that was my downfall three, four years ago. In the last three years, I've really picked that up. So that's made a big difference, but for actual business planning and, and work we do, it is really, really focused upon education, understanding, researching the market, and then implementing it all in a day to day. So I do every day, I write affirmations of those three goals that I wanted to do the next year, crazy enough, they come true. So if you're not doing three affirmations a day of what you want to manifest in your life, I suggest starting. Um, some are personal, some are business related. So that's like the easy part, but really thinking, okay, and then I meet a goal. So now what am I backfilling that with? 
because I'm not just crossing off the goals and not doing anything. I'm putting in a new goal. I'm putting in something else that I'm working towards. And then I figure out what works for my team and I so that we can meet those goals and we can help our clients and we can just be all encompassing. So I do lots of notes, notebooks on notebooks. I think I should invest in one of those remarkables one of these days um, because I am old school with my notebook. Um, but I do really try hard to have a notebook for each thing because then I'm consistent with my, you know, three or four notebooks, the calendar. <laughs> oh, Kristen, the notebook. So uh, there's an app on the iPad for anyone who has an iPad. It's called Nebo. It's like $10 and you Ooh. can do folders. I'll, I'll send it to you. But like, yeah, so that's where I keep my notes. I could not carry around that many notebooks. I love you. I also love how everything that you both said is just, it's a lot of what I do too. And I think one other important call out we can share with everybody is like, there's always going to be things that don't work or don't resonate or that you didn't enjoy. And that's okay. Like, it's okay to fail once in a while at something because I mean, without some failure, like how are you going to really enjoy your successes? And I think that for us, like one thing I actually like is like we review the previous year, what worked, what didn't work, what don't we want to do. And then we plan out the whole year, just like you all said, but also knowing that like things change. Like I had my whole 2020 planned out and then what happened? COVID and like we had totally pivot to virtual events and it worked out, but like also meeting with your team consistently throughout the year, your referral partners to make sure you're on the same page with events. Like it's like a constant planning, like as a loan officer or as a real estate agent, you're not just that, that you also have to, you know, have some my minor expertise in marketing. And fortunately for us, we have an amazing marketing department and events department that kind of takes it home for us. But, um, you know, just really, really um, making sure that you are writing the plan and, and then working the plan, I think, is the, the way to go. So I want to thank um, these three lovely ladies for joining me today and for being so amazing. Um, for Grow and for your colleagues and everybody who joined us today. And we will see you in January for the next Grow Mentorship Series. Thank Looking you. Forward Bye, everyone. Thank you so Thank much, you. Joanne, Jamie, Sarah, with all your knowledge and bringing it to us. Thank you so much. I'm grateful for you all, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Bye.